Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. And uh, made a couple changes here to the mono red aggro deck. Um, it's been a couple days here, just sort of taking some time off. And uh, yeah, let's get let's get right to it. So first of all, thanks so much for stopping by. Um, if you are new to my channel, I really do appreciate you. And for all my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. It really does mean the world to me. I do also want to let you know that uh, there is going to be a deck list in the description, both at moxfield.com and also at untapped.gg. And there's also going to be a link to all of my playlists in the description as well. So check those out if you're interested. Um, I also want to give a shout out here to my members. So thank you guys. Um, for those of you who have become members, it's a great way to get early access to my content. And it's also a nice way to help support the channel if that's something that you'd like to do. Um, and if you're interested in that, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So. These are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys, and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's take a look at the changes. So after running the deck on ladder, um, I really, I did like the Stinger Back Terror, but it just wasn't fast enough. It wasn't efficient enough, and it was a lot of fun. Um, also the Shiv and Devastators were a lot of fun to see if I could, you know, get my Invasion of Tarkirs to start hitting for three and four. And while that was nice, it just wasn't enough to substantiate those slots in the deck. Um, just a little bit too slow, a little bit too inefficient. And so I ended up cutting all the dragons in the deck. Um, but I did keep in the Invasion of Tarkir because... Even without other dragons in the deck, this is a very, very powerful effect. And it's really good against the mirror. It's great against mono white humans. It's great against Boros Convoke. So I think that four copies of Invasion of Tarkir are worth having in the deck. And then I did make room for three copies of Godric Cloaked Reveler, which has always just been an amazing, aggressive uh, red creature in uh, mono red aggro. And it's also nice because it can flip into a dragon if you have two permanents come out in the same turn. And with cards like uh, Slickshot Show Off, where you can plot it, and Demonic Ruckus, it's actually fairly easy to do. So that is a nice little benefit there of Godric. Um, the other cards that I kind of, um, for the other changes that I made, so we're still at 19 lands, which does feel pretty good. This feels nice because I have 18 sources of red, which I think is kind of the minimum that I want to do. And then the 19th land is the Mishra's Foundry, and there's enough kind of things that that can help with that it feels good. Um, two copies of Sokinzen. I really don't want to go more than two with such a low land count, but I feel like having two copies is fine. Because for the, you know, if you do have like a Godric in hand and you have two lands in play in the Sokinzen and you draw your second one, you can still float the second tokens in for one turn to get the, to three three mana for that one turn um just due to the legend rule you can tap one and then play the other and tap that um yeah so the other changes i had ended up going back up to a full play set of play with fire just because it's so good it's such an amazing effect and i also went up to a full play set of demonic ruckus so between Four copies of Kumano Faces Kakazan, four copies of Swift Spear, and four copies of Demonic Ruckus. You basically always have a turn one play, which is really nice. And then I did also add two copies of Shock. Um, I know that a lot of other mono red decks are running Ancestral Anger kind of to help with pump and card draw sort of all in one. I wanted to have s spells that are kind of a bit more... Um, interactive just because a it's sorcery speed so it's easy to get blown out and not that it's not a good card and i certainly think it's great but i want to have answers to opposing slick shot show offs and so having the extra shock effects is really nice and 
I think that since we're running Invasion of Tarkir, this is kind of, you know, if you were to run Ancestral Anger, you would run that in place of Invasion of Tarkir. But I think Invasion of Tarkir is better. And it just does give you sort of more game against a lot of the aggro matchups. Admittedly, against Control, this is not a great card. But it's still just like a two damage shock to kind of get like the last couple points through. So it's not actively bad unless you try to flip it against Control, in which case it can be pretty terrible because then you throw away a lot of damage. Um, there are corner cases where you do end up wanting to flip it if they've gained too much life and you can't kind of close the game out. But for the most part, this is basically an expensive shock against Control decks. And then against Aggro decks, it's an absolute bomb. Okay, so that, those are kind of the changes, and let's go ahead and jump into some games. Um, I am planning to do a standard event um, in the next, probably next day or two, so I do want to get a standard event out for you guys, just so you can, you know, see that this is definitely something that is capable of getting some wins. That is at least my hope, my plan. Um, right now we're kind of in the top 500 mythic, so there's been several days I've sort of taken off here and haven't played much, so just kind of keeping in that. Um, deck is still very competitive. Opening hand looks great. Go ahead and keep. And playing a lot of Demonic Ruckus, like, this is a card that actually has been very surprising to me. Um, I've found myself wanting to play, like, Ruckus turn one over Kumano faces Kakazan if I don't have, like, a natural progression uh with it it's also nice like if i have like a turn to um you know invasion then it's nice to go ruckus into invasion as opposed to kimono faces kakazan into invasion so here i think i'm just going to go ahead and run out the ruckus just because we don't have a creature to draw into this is still a nice a, a, this is still a nice play kind of gets the mana going all right, so it looks like we're up against most likely Boros Convoke here. Now we can go ahead and get Kumano going. And then we'll hold the shock here just in case they have like um, a Warden of the Inner Sky or something like that. And we are going to hold it here just because, again, um, actually, now that they're holding up reinforcements, do we want to shock this just to kind of slow them down? Eh, I could see a, an argument for it. I think, yeah. Just having them, like, not be able to go explosive is pretty important, because if they can go into Night Errant, it really kind of shuts us down. I think I actually am going to take out their Epicure here. This way, if they don't have a third land, they can't go into Night Errant. Fortunately, we did not draw a creature, so that's not great. Yeah, I think I'm going to play with fire one of the reinforcements. Again, just to slow slow them down a bit. Buy ourselves some time. This way, unless they have Gleeful Demolition, they won't be able to go for Night Errant. So this is kind of a controversial play here a little bit, but I think denying the Night Errant is worth considering. So here we're going to wait to have our Kumano flip so we can get rid of the Evangelist without it leaving behind a token. I guess actually we don't need to do this just yet. Um, we can go ahead and Ruckus first. And then if they do want to try to double block, then we could go Monstrous Rage. I 
Okay, so we'll just go ahead and Monstrous Rage anyways. Now there's a consideration of if we even bother with the Lightning Strike. Um, one potential reason would be if they try to set up like a case of the Gateway Express. Um, but we could just try to like go face here and really shorten the game. So I guess we can wait here. Okay, Evangelist number two. Now I think we will take out the first one since we're not gonna be able to fight through all of this. Um, and it definitely slows them down a little bit. Okay, that was a nice pickup. Um, I think they're at a high enough life total here that we do try to flip the um, invasion. Yeah, because otherwise I guess we attack, drop them to nine, and then we can get them to six possibly two. I think it's worth going for the invasion. They don't really have good answers for it. There is kind of a danger here that we lose to recruiter if we don't do this fast enough, but I think I think it will pay for itself. Ah, they had the recruiter. Um, let's see. So if we Swift Spear, we can flip this. We can also flip it at instant speed and just play Swift Spear. Kind of have it as a surprise. I think we probably just sit and then we can use this to... Um, block here and then also use this to block here. We'll go to two. That's sort of the plan. If they draw something here, we're in rough spots, but I think this is probably the best bet. Question is, do we use lightning strike? It's a bit more mana efficient and we might need to use this to go face to try to set up our draws. Let's see, I guess we'll swing for six on our turn. Seven, eight, 11. Yeah, it's not quite enough. I guess depending on what we draw. I think I wanna be mana efficient here. might lose by one point of damage but I think the the mana is slightly more important also being able to scry now we can use turn uh, play with fire plus the attack off our um, thunder maw to take these two out 
And so I guess, yeah, we don't want to scry here. All right, so I guess it might have been better to hold the lightning strike, but we didn't know we were going to draw a land there. And they'll need like a recruiter off the top or something like that. So I think we can just try to push here. If they have re if they have reinforcements, we're kind of done. So we lose to a lot of different stuff here. Um, I guess yeah. If they have reinforcements, we just lose. So we're gonna try to go face here. Oh, actually, we need to take out this this bat. Never mind. But we want to get the extra point here from our swift spear. Yeah, and they had reinforcements, unfortunately. So, couldn't really play around that. Yeah, so it's an interesting game. I'm not sure if we should have just tried to go face instead of trying to flip the invasion. We might not have... Like, we might have been able to close the game out and... But I'm not sure if we had like enough time. Usually I think it's the right move to try to flip invasion, especially if you have it early. There it was kind of, yeah, I'm not sure. The other, I guess, like looking back on that game, would it have been better to not use like our shocks on those early one ones? Maybe, but like if they get like a turn two knight errant or turn three knight errant, it's pretty rough and the game can spiral out of control pretty quickly. So here, because we have Invasion of Tarkir, um, instead of going Ruckus turn one, I do want to go Swift Spear turn one so we can capitalize and start working on the invasion. Okay, so I guess if we're up against blue-white control, it's a little different. Here we probably just want to go Code Breaker and then just try to push as much damage as we can before they use like a lockdown. Um, otherwise, the other possibility is just to like try to run out this threat and kind of play for more of a long game. We might have to do that. Yeah, I mean, we can push decent amounts of damage here if we go for the Code Breaker. I don't know which is better. Let's do Code Breaker. I have been finding, though, that, like, sometimes it's better to try to push for a long game and just use, like, one threat at a time. Really, I mean, it kind of depends. Like, if they have Lockdown in their opener, like... You can just lose. All right, so here, I don't think we want to go for the Ruckus because I guess they could have like Phantom Interference, but actually, since they've got these two mana, it's pretty unlikely. They usually just run like three steps ahead and um, no more lies. So this is actually decently a decent chance of landing. The only problem here is if they have like get lost or like march, which they probably do. So I don't know. It, this is a decent chance of landing, so maybe we go for it. And I think we go on the code breaker here just because if they have march, they have to pay extra to get rid of it instead of targeting the swift spear where they could just tap out to march okay they have to get lost that's yeah that's unfortunate that was certainly a possibility 
But like if we had just plotted it, I don't know that we would have had like a good opportunity to use it the next turn necessarily. Kind of felt like we had to go for it there. This is not a great matchup for sure. Here, yeah, I don't know if it's a great idea to try, try to take out the Jace. I mean, that just gives them more time, which we don't want. But at the same time, it is kind of slowing us down a lot also. So yeah, maybe we go for it. I guess it like forces them to have the board wipe. Like if they're trying to push Jace hard, like it can definitely spiral out of control. Here I'm a little bit loath of playing the Swift Spear, just because if they do have like the um, the lockdown, it's it's so bad to lose both of our threats. So I think instead, let's go ahead and Foundry. And then we could invasion here, but I think I actually just want to map token. I guess let's map token and hope we hit. Okay, that was a nice pickup. Happy to keep that. I guess we could Swift Spear get this down to two. <sighs> Lockdown is so bad though, but I guess since we know we have the slick shot coming, it's okay. Yeah, I guess now we could also just go face. Um, hmm. Do you feel like if they have the board wipe though, they could definitely just take control of the game if we try to go face here? So I think actually going for Jace is probably correct. Unfortunately, this causes us to lose our um, slick shot there, but <clears throat> that was a nice pickup. Good invasion to finish off the Jace here. Um, it's probably right. I don't want to like put all of our creatures out there, so I think I'm probably just going to do that. I guess if they have another get lost, maybe it's better to get Sokens in going as well. Yeah, man, having this Jace survive is definitely not what I'm looking for. But I think walking into like a big board wipe is probably super bad. So I think we just push with the one here and then go like end of turn Sokens in. Okay, no board wipe. Guess we go for it. Yeah, 
Here, if they eat one of our guys, I think it's still worth pushing three damage. I don't think going for the invasion is going to work here. Um, they just have so much removal on board wipes. It just seems really bad. Same time, though, I mean, like, this Restless Anchorage is going to be trouble. Yeah, I don't know. I think we just go face. Man, they've got all the planeswalkers this game. Definitely kind of running out of gas here. Um, I think we might have to try to flip this invasion, but again, like, board wipe is so rough. So I guess we just start working on Jace a little bit. Nice pickup. Um, problem is, is that it's gonna be really hard to push damage here. They can, I guess, they can only activate one of their anchorages. <sighs> yeah, I don't know the play here. So I guess if we like push like slick shot plus Godric on Jace, or if we just like push with everything on Jace, they block slick shot, show off, probably Godric. Yeah, I guess that's probably the move. We are gonna lose a bunch of stuff here. But I think we do want to finish their Jace off if at all possible. Like this is just it's we're just in a really bad position, unfortunately. Retreat is the sensible action. And now Sunfall is so rough. Yep, there it is. I think we fought through four Planeswalkers already. Yeah. So maybe it would have been better to just try to go face from the beginning, but it's like, ah, if they have board wipe, you're just dead. Probably just dead here. They've got a huge hand plus memory deluge to go and find stuff. Restless anchorages. And this deck is really short on man lands, so it's like not 
not a great setup. I think you just sort of have to hope they haven't got it and just kind of go for like the ultra blitz. And if they've got any board wipe, you just lose. We're just done here, unfortunately. It's an interesting opening hand. We don't have any creatures. We only, there's only 15 creatures in the deck. Although I guess with Kumano and the um, invasions, that takes it up to uh, 23. So I guess we can wait on the play with fire here. Okay, and happy to be able to just go right into invasion and then set up for slick shot next turn. Keeping the uh, the creatures clean off the battlefield is super important against uh, Boros. Here we could invasion, but I think we just want to start working on this uh, first invasion. And then once we can get Kumano to flip, we can maybe get rid of this uh, Sanguine Evangelist. Okay, well, at least they don't have the Imidane's Recruiter. So we can go Godric here. Um, I think though, like flipping this will use up the um, Kumano buff, so we can just... I think the play here is we use Invasion to take out the Bat, so we can get through. And then we lightning strike probably the maybe the warden just to keep that off the table. We do want to use Lightning Strike on Warden here. Then we can actually flip the five and then set this up. We won't be able to deal with the Evangelist until next turn, but we also want to wait for Kamano to flip. So let's just do this.
Hopefully they don't have Case. Case would be like a really bad draw for us. So let's see, if we block here, we take 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. We block like this, because we don't want to kill their evangelist yet, since we don't want to have a blocker in the way. So I think we just do it like this. Now we can use Godric to come in as a dragon. Get double triggers and double pumps. So let's see, we're, we'll be pushing, we can double pump our dragons. That's four plus double activation is eight um, plus nine is 17. 18. So we don't quite have lethal. Get them to 1. Alright, so I think we need to sit back with Kumano. Probably in the show off. ahead and kill that and kill that. And then double pump. And then we have three blockers, one, two, three. Hopefully they can't finish us here. Hopefully no Imidanes here. Oof, case is really bad. We're not dead though. Yeah, and they're just dead on the swing back, right? Should do it. We're going to get a timeout here. They might just be seeing if there's any other options. I don't think there's anything they could play here that would matter. So yeah, it looks like we might just be getting a salty timeout. But yeah, I really like having the invasions here against this matchup. It definitely makes this matchup so much better. And just like keeping the wardens off the table is super important.
and that's I think part of the reason why I think like the shocks are better than the uh, ancestral angers. Also, because it's like a good answer for like opposing slick shot show offs and just kind of having that ready. And it's nice that like, you know, there still are games where you can like f flip Godric and then get extra activations off of the invasions. But I think that like overall, like Stingerback Terror is a really fun card. It's just unfortunately not quite as efficient as everything else. Yeah, we've got a full full timeout on our hands here, but hmm. And the land count has felt pretty good also, like, with 19 land. Since we've only got three three drops, like, we have an extra decent number of two drops, so I, I could see maybe monkeying with the land a little bit, but 19 has felt, so, felt good so far. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Let's take a quick look at the stats. So I don't think it's quite updated here for the most recent games, but uh, where the deck is at is currently 78% win rate, 28 wins, and 8 losses. So it's been doing really well. Um, again, I think the, the version here isn't quite updated to the most recent games, but um, overall I've been really, very, very happy with it. So... Some of the tough matchups are like very removal heavy matchups. Looks like we had, um, again, like Azorius Control is tough because they have all the board wipes. Uh, Rakdos, I think this is like the pump version so they can just get under you sometimes. Um, so I'm not sure why that seems to be a bad match, but with the extra burn that we added in, I think it's a better matchup. And then Mono Red, and Boros has actually been really good. And Mono White. Mono White's 5 and 0. Boros 5 and 1. And then Mono Red 6 and 2. So overall, very happy with it. But yeah, we'll see you for the next one. Thank you guys so much again uh, for being here. You guys are awesome.